in this presentation, I will talk uh, briefly about uh, updates of the breeding program and research plans. Uh, so my name is Sushan Ru. I'm the small fruit breeder at Auburn University. Uh, so the breeding program started in April last year. It's just uh, a little bit over one year old as of now. And the goal of the pre uh, program is to develop elite blueberry cultivars for Alabama uh, with a broader application to nearby regions. And potentially we would like to expand to strawberries in the future as well. Uh, so you might be wondering why uh, do we choose blueberry? So uh, globally, blueberry is a very popular fruit for its uh, health benefits. And the blueberry industry has been continuously increasing in the past 50 years, and its project to continue to increase. In the Southeast region is a major produce uh, production region for blueberries in the United States. If we look at the numbers from Georgia, North Carolina, Carolina and Florida, in those uh, states, the acreage of blueberry ranged from 4,000 acres to uh, 16,000 acres. And every year it generates $50 million to $100 million in those states. Um, however, um, blueberry production in Alabama is really marginal compared to our neighbors. And as of now, there's less than 1,000 acres of blueberries produced in Alabama. So with very similar climates to our neighbors, it, there's great opportunities for us to double and even triple the production of blueberries in the state. And currently, blueberries are mainly produced on small U-pick farms and uh, some farms uh, targeting the retail uh, and farmer's market as well. And the major blueberry type uh, in Alabama is rabbit eye. It's a native species in the southeastern region. Uh, however, on um, the uh, in general, in the southeast region, southern highbush is much more popular nowadays for its many uh, benefits. So it has generally earlier maturity, better fruit quality, such as bigger berries, better taste, and fewer seeds. Yet they also tend to have longer shelf life. Uh, with, for those reasons, southern highbush blueberries are more popular in the wholesale market. And nowadays, a lot of uh, wholesale chains, they uh, would only recognize highbush uh, cultivars rather than rabbit eye. Um, regardless of the many benefits and uh, nice features of southern highbush, they are really hard to grow in Alabama. And the top one... Uh, challenges spring frost damages. If we look at the weather data in uh, historical weather data in Alabama, and uh, regardless if it's in uh, northern Alabama or southern Alabama, it's almost certain that there will be at least um, well, one frost events before uh, April. So if there's no frost protection, um, uh, in the field, you know, it will be very risky to plant any southern highbush cultivars or even rabbit eye cultivars which bloom before, um, before April. And so uh, it is uh, the most popular frost protection uh, pra practice in the southeast is overhead irrigation. It requires a large amount of water continuously applied on the plants during a frost event to uh, release heat. Uh, so when, during the process of water condensing into ice, it releases heat to, to protect the berries. Uh, so on, on average, it requires two tons of water per hour, which is really hard to achieve for most of farms in Alabama due to the sh shortage of water or uh, a lack of efficient pumping system. So that's really expensive to set up and hard to achieve. And we also have some local growers such as Dr. Arley Powell, uh, who developed this um, 
tunnel structure and to cover uh, to use for uh, frost blankets during a frost event, which has been proved proven to be very effective. But uh, on a large scale, it would be hard and expensive to apply this uh, type of structure for either UPIC or wholesale produ production. And so in this March, there's a uh, historical like uh, frost event, which drops dropped the temperature to 24 degree Fahrenheit uh, together with wind speed of 30 uh, mile per hour. And that was a uh, once in a 10 year frost event. Uh, it caused um, dramatic crop loss in Alabama, Georgia and Mississippi. So in Georgia, there's uh, the report was like uh, there are 20 percent to 100 percent of crop loss after that frost. Uh, many farms uh, had no crop left at all after that uh, frost. And these are some pictures before and after pictures from the Ferguson farm at, Chat at Chatham, Alabama. You can see like how bad it was because of the high wind speed uh, it made it really difficult to use any protection methods such as wind machine or um, overhead irrigation so it was really a devastating event and so the bottom line is it's really important to consider frost protection if you want to try southern high bush or if there's no frost protection it is safer to plant cultivars which flowers in late march or even later so another challenge for growing southern high bush is uh the need of acidic soil so high bush southern high bush has a uh, higher need and more like a uh, stringent need for low soil pH. And so before uh, planting, it's important to conduct soil and water tests uh, to uh, find out the soil type and soil and water pH. And then uh, during so for the soil preparation, it's beneficial to apply a large amount of pine bark to reduce soil pH and increase organic matter. And it's recommended to plant the plants on a raised bed so the water drainage will be better. And if you have high water pH, it will be important to do some justifications such as installing injector and using sulfuric acid acid to lower pH, water pH. So again, that takes a lot of investment and it's not cheap to uh, install injector. It also requires a lot of experience to know how to um, adjust water pH to the ideal range. And on top of all those challenges, it is also very critical to maintain a stringent spray program because Southern Highbush uh, cultivars tend to have a wide range of diseases such as bacteria, leaf scorch, leaf rust, dumb blight, and uh, phytophthora, root rot, you name it. So uh, in general, if uh, growers are looking into wholesale, then southern high bush would be the cultivar which can increase your, uh, your income and um, the uh, the volume of sale, um, but uh, if you really want to go that direction, it is important to establish the proper infrastructure for frost protection, soil and water pH adjustment and disease control. And um, however, for most small farmers in Alabama, if you're mainly looking at UPIC or retail market, or if you're doing some organic farming, rabbit eye cultivars are still um, the recommended uh, species to grow in Alabama. So with that, um, that's the current situation of challenges of producing southern highbush. The goal of the breeding program is 
actually to improve the existing cultivars for better uh, management uh, and better performance. So overall, the goal of the Purdue program is to evaluate existing blueberry cultivars for Alabama and also to develop new blueberry cultivars for this region as well. And the uniqueness of our breeding program is that we're not like other uh, major produ production areas, we're not only serving the big scale, large scale producers, we're serving the small farmers as well. So it is important for uh, Alabama to have seven high bush cultivars with better spring frost tolerance, better soil adaptability, uh, better disease resistance, and uh, also improved co uh, fruit quality. So those are the uh, areas we're going to improve on for southern high bush. In the meantime, rabbit eye still have a lot of features that's attractive for local growers. And it is the goal of the breeding program to improve its maturity, speed up its maturity, and continue to improve its fruit quality and disease resistance. To do that, uh, currently we're conducting a cultivar evaluation trial uh, using materials from all the um, major breeding programs in the Southeast region. So we're introducing cultivars and advanced selections from North Carolina, uh, Georgia, Florida, and uh, Poplarville, Mississippi to test them in two regions of Alabama, one in central Alabama and one in southern Alabama. And these are the list of cultivars and selections we're going to test. So uh, cultivars from University of Florida include Arcadia, Colossus, Farthing, Key Crisp, Optimus, Patricia, Centennial, Wayne, San Joaquin. And also we are testing uh, some high bush and uh, uh, rabbit eye cultivars from University of Georgia include Victoria, uh, Oklockney, Alabha, Cruor, Titan, Vernon, and also a uh, new handover, a new uh, cultivar from North Carolina, Gumbo and Brightwell from Mississippi, Poplarville, Blue Ribbon over time from uh, uh, Fall Creek Nursery in Oregon. On top of the uh, released cultivars, we're also testing advanced selections from the major breeding programs uh, um, in multiple locations of Alabama. Uh, so right now the plants have been planted, uh, half of the plants have been planted at uh, E.V. Smith's uh, research station in central Alabama and Bruton research station in northern, uh, southern Alabama. And we'll continue to receive plant materials uh, later this year and uh, plant all of those in the field uh, by the end of this year. And so on top of cultural evaluation, I have already conducted uh, uh, the first round of crosses during this spring and we have uh, berries and seeds collected already. This picture showed some parental materials we got from uh, University of Georgia and you can see they have very large and firm berries from multiple selections and um, if you taste on the taste and fruit quality is exceptional. So hopefully we'll have some seedlings from this process to test in the coming year. And so in addition to breeding efforts and uh, cultural evaluation, we are also in, uh, focusing on improving disease resistance for blueberries in Alabama. So um, Boucher's furious damblet is a top limiting factor uh, in Alabama uh, for uh, blueberry production. And it is a devastating disease caused by fungi in the family of Boucher's furiacy. And it, the fun, fungi can enter the uh, plant through natural openings or mechanical uh, wounds and to block the xylem vessels and cause drought-like symptoms. If you see dry leaves and dry stems, and uh, that could, might be the uh, uh, initial symptoms of this uh, disease and eventually in severe uh, cases, uh, the entire plant would die. And a very uh, useful uh, 
diagnose uh, tool is to cut across the stems, infected stems. And if you can see uh, a pie-shaped discoloration on the cross section, that you that's usually a good sign of stem blade infection. Uh, so far, there's no single fungicide that can be effective uh, to this disease. So it is recommended to a uh, use a series of cultural management practices and also early detection and prevention for this disease to reduce the chance of outbreak. And uh, right now my lab is off uh, conducting a research project to identify the distribution and causal species for this uh, uh, disease. And we're offering free disease a, a screening service to our growers. So if you notice any similar symptoms like drought-like symptoms or diet stems or uh, plants, and you're wondering if it's stem blade, uh, feel free to uh, send me an email or give me a text uh, or call. And so we'll come over to your farm and uh, provide the disease screening for you. It doesn't have to be stem blade. If you have other diseases that you don't know what uh, those are and you need uh, some uh, diagnosed service, let me know and I'm ha happy to provide that screening for you. And so those are the updates for blueberry uh, breeding. And on top of that, uh, I'm working with Dr. Edgar Vincent right now to plan some cultural evaluation trial for strawberries as well. Um, strawberry is like a very popular uh, fruit crop in Alabama and the need for new cultivar is increasing. So uh, we are hope to establish uh, a cultivar trial starting from central and northern Alabama and eventually at another location in the southern region. So at this planning stage, it will be really helpful if uh, uh, growers can tell us what cultivars you're interested, what are the challenges you're facing? Uh, just let us know what are the areas uh, we can work on to uh, further help our growers. Uh, so again, this is my email, my first name, sushan.ru, last name, at auburn.edu. And my cell is 509-942-9811. Uh, feel free to contact me anytime. My role here is to serve our growers. And whatever are your needs will be the goal of my research. Uh, so with that, I'd like to thank my colleagues and collaborators from all over the country and especially our growers uh, in Alabama and nearby regions. It's so um, fortunate for me to work with such great uh, community and I'm really fortunate um, to have your support. Um, yeah, thanks for your time and uh, feel free to ask me any questions or um, give me any suggestions for the breeding program.